Howdy, everyone. Um, I just want to share with you a quick little afternoon circuit bend you can do on a Super Nintendo you have laying around. I pulled one out of my coat closet the other day and um, busted it off and opened it up and and started working and, and started off. It took a few pictures of, of the circuits and the circuit board and, and you know, I... With this project, I, I wanted it to be easy, you know, on my behalf. I want it to be easy as far as assembly and as far as low complication. I want it to be low risk for the Super Nintendo, low risk for the user. And I want it to be relatively discreet and, and kind of maintain the integrity of the Super Nintendo and the spirit of it. So, you know, with those ideas in mind, I... I, I went about kind of poking around this guy and seeing what I could do. And I figured a good way to kind of accomplish my goals and, and to get some activity out of it would be testing all, all the vias I found on the board. And if you don't know, vias are basically the little holes that you find in, in these circuit boards that connect to different layers. And this is a two layer board. There's um, the integrated circuits printed on one side and there's the, um, the surface mount resistors and capacitors and all those components printed on, on the other side of the board. And um, the vias run between these two different sides and they, they connect different parts of the board to other parts. And, and vias are nice because you can actually put your wire through the via and then you can solder the wire through the via and you kind of, it's, it's a lot easier to work with than working with with surface mount um, technology which is very very tiny and very hard to solder to and, and work with after a while poking around discovering which chips were reactive and which chips tended to crash the machine I found that that two chips on, on the top specifically these two Texas instrument 7a 9090 chips were responsible for basically the video rendering the video handling of, of within the, the games and it was very easy to scramble those by by just grounding them so um i found that I had more than enough bends to accommodate two 16 cable ribbons so i decided to go with, with two 16 cable ribbons giving me 32 separate bends and and i i wired up all 32 bends to the cables um, basically by splitting the wires or separating the wires from each other in each individual cable and stripping them and threading them through each via and soldering them. After soldering the two ribbons, I was able to, to string them around the outside of the case. Um, luckily, there's plenty of room inside the Super Nintendo um, in order to accommodate the ribbon cables. It wasn't much folding or, or real manipulation needed. I was able to pulled into the back of the unit where I, I simply cut a small slit in the back of uh, one of the casings with wire cutters and and I was able to thread the two ribbon cables through the hole in the back that I made. Um, I had an extra breadboard laying around the house that actually had adhesive foam taping on the back of it and I was able to peel that off and it fit perfectly in the back of the Super Nintendo. And uh, I simply placed some some header pins within the breadboard and was able to um, attach the ribbon cables to the breadboard after putting little heads on the on the ribbon cables. And then um, the I created an extra port for the ground where I actually wrapped a um, a stripped cable around a screw and soldered it to the ground casing and and drilled a little hole in the back of the unit and pulled the, the wire through the hole and was able to um, create a bus on the breadboard for the ground. And um, although it was a temporary situation and, and a temporary way to deal with it, it's, it's very, very quick. It took me a total of two hours. And, um, you know, all, all the bends are, are able to be activated by basically using these little patch cables and, and jumping from the ground to the individual bends. Um, unfortunately, you know, there's a few limitations with this setup. Um, you're only able to access 16 individual bends at a time. 
um, because you only are able to access one row of each of the ribbon cables at this time. Um, I, I plan on in the future basically creating a, a small optional breakout box that you, you can use that will be have everything labeled and, and you'll be able to have more intelligent tactile control over what's going on. I guess I'll, I'll just sort of open it up and, and start playing here for a little bit and, and show you what it's all about. A little Donkey Kong Country um, for our demos here. This is kind of how it looks like by default. It's relatively plain. It has a little bit of kind of a textured look, kind of like, um, you know, Kirby's epic yarn in a way. Um, very subtle. And then I'll, I'll just kind of cycle through the available connections we have on the breadboard here. Um, it'll be only 16 of the 32 total connections. I'll, I'll go in a little bit later and, and switch out the uh, headers so you can see the other 16. Um, most of them have to do with kind of jumbling up the textures, replacing one texture for another. Some will, will change the overall gamma, suck one color away, replace it with another. Um, and some do kind of more abstract, artistic things. Um, but they're all pretty consistent. Uh, they all, for the most part, once you break the connection, uh, the game will go back to normal. There's, I believe, two exceptions to that rule in the next bank here, um, in which the game will stay modified, um, oftentimes in a different way, but still modified until you zone. So you actually have to, um, have the game load a new area in order for the textures to kind of jump back to uh, before. So we're almost done here. Um, yeah, this is one of the, the tournament textures. You can see it just kind of sticks. <laughs> and uh, I have to walk over to this cave in order to um, make the game go back to normal after breaking the connection here. So I guess next I'll just kind of play through a few levels here of some random patches and, and try to keep on patching it up differently so you can see some of the different chaotic possibilities first. Um, and then a little bit later on I will um, play some of my favorite patches and the ones that aesthetically I enjoy playing and they're still functional enough where you can actually play the game. So um, yeah, I'll just check it out here. This is about three different patches, kind of set up ram into the ground. Um, kind of jumbles up everything, but the nice thing about the way that the system works generally is that the, the main characters are almost always uh, either affected differently from the backgrounds or not affected at all. Uh, you can see I kind of set it back to normal here. And, um, it doesn't matter how messed up it is, once you load again, if there's no connections made, it will go back to this normal state. Um, and then at any point in the level, you can stop playing, you can make a connection, you can change the patch, and, and then kind of go from it there. From there, So you see, that one's kind of interesting because um, it basically becomes distorted in what you see, and once you move out of that area, then it has a different effect. So all these patches will kind of have different ways that they behave, um, but all of them are, are tested to not crash the machine permanently which is nice. All of them are, are reverted once you zone at the very least. Um, so none of them are, are kind of game changers. I mean, they're all game changers, but... Here's a, another playthrough, and I'll just kind of go through and, and switch this one out every few minutes like I did the last one and, and show you a few different possibilities we can get. Fortunately, my Donkey Kong skills are much more lax than they used to be, so I apologize if any aficionados out there are having difficulty watching this. <laughs> yeah, this is a nice effect here. As you can see, you can actually still play the game, you know, and still beat levels. Um, and this this works for all games too. You know, any game you can plug in. Um, 
some of the effects will be basically the same. A lot of them, especially the, the texture jumbling, will be different. Will be noticeably different. But um, yeah, so this is this is one of my my favorite bends here. It's just kind of makes everything. God, I don't even know how to describe it. Just sort of like a really really old computer 4C game. But um, yeah, it's really fun. Oh god, what happened to everything? <laughs> so the same bend will sometimes give you different results depending on, you know, what, what textures the, the chip is actually trying to call and, and what signal is supposed to be going through the chip. So remember, we're basically sucking the signals away from the communication between these two video chips. So oftentimes you'll see an effect like this where a lot of things just straight up disappear. Um, this is one of my favorite modes because actually the faster you go, the easier it is. Oh, god. Alright, see. This is one of the impossible modes where there's no possible way you can know what's going on and no possible way you can get the So, you know, it does have that as well. Lines are a big theme with a lot of these bends, uh, vertical and horizontal lines. Um, it's something, something it does.